Hey everyone, it's Speeding Offense. Today we're going to look at engine power in Starfield. A little convoluted, going to do a rundown of thrust, power maneuvering and all that. First off, we'll look at thrust and uh, naturally you're going to assume that that affects top speed and it doesn't. Matter of fact, it has so little effect on the way your ship handles that you might think it doesn't do anything at all and you'd be forgiven for thinking that. Let's have a look first at these Class C four power engines here. Let's take them into space. So up in space, with my perks, this ship will go from 0 to 168 in 6.88 seconds. There we are. So I've gone and cut the thrust by 50% in the most caveman use rock fashion possible. With one engine, half as much thrust, this will do 168 in 8 seconds. Which, well, if you know your numbers, yes, that's slower. Is that substantially slower, considering how lopsided our propulsion is now? Well, no, not really. And either way, it's the same top speed in both cases. But while we're on the topic of speed, there is something else that's worth mentioning. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take these Class C engines off. We're going to go back to the most basic of uh, the Class A engines, although we're going to get the highest 10 ones that I have available at level 43. I'm going to put three of these on and I'm going to also put on one of the class ones. Now what this is going to do is give me an almost identical amount of thrust uh, as to what I had and same amount of power uh, as to what I had with the class C engines. This is actually a hair less, about 220 power uh, overall less, but I mean that's close enough as to make no difference. Let's see what happens when we floor these things. These will take 7.18 seconds to get us to 194, which if you remember, is a fair bit more than what the Class C engines were doing. So if you want to hit a higher speed, oh, how about that, 195? You need to actually go with basic engines. Because again, these have the same thrust as those Class C engines that came off. The last thing we got to talk about is maneuverability or mobility. Now, the highest you can have your mobility at is 100. This is 98. That's basically a passing grade. It's nice to have it at 100. But let's see if we can make this 100 now that I'm level 43 and I just unlocked a couple new engines. Before we do that, let's look at these. See, in most games, you're going to get what you see here, engine thrust, maneuvering thrust, and how much power it's going to use. And you do some quick math. What's the most efficient way to get the most amount of power? Because if something uses half as much power but has more than half as much thrust, well, you want that, right? Well, not always. This, uh, this cell 610, it is exactly half the thrust and exactly half maneuvering thrust of the Poseidon or power one I just pulled off. So it should be identical otherwise, right? Well, let's drop two of these on without any regard for uh, aesthetics. And you see, we only get up to a mobility of 73. And that's because weight is also a factor and these suckers are heavy. See, uh, one of these, the old engine that I pulled off is 336. These are 300 a pop. Now, we'll take a look at the price. These are 19,800 and see what we get out of, uh, okay, so the Amun 6s, because they're slightly less, as opposed to slightly more. And 19 with two of those, and I probably shouldn't have taken off both the Poseidons, because i got to put this one back on now. So we're at 81 with the cheaper, lower-powered Amun 6s. That means that Class C engine is actually inferior to this cheaper, lower-powered variant because it's so bloody heavy. So what that means is not only are you paying attention to how much thrust and maneuvering thrust they're producing, you're also having to pay attention to the mass. Level 43 unlocks this one. So this one, on paper, if you ignore mass, should be worse than the engines I pulled off. But I am guessing but these are actually going to be better than what I had before. And uh, most notably, these are Class A engines. This is the SA4330 engine, and you can get it at most cities, but not at your own base. Okay, with the important task of coloring our spaceship done, I'll probably move them around to make them look a little nicer later, although I think they actually look pretty good back there. Uh, you'll see 
These have actually raised our mobility up to 100 despite being lower powered combined than the engines that they replace. And that's because the mass has gone down substantially. Let's get this thing into space and see what it does. So I have the, uh, the stopwatch out. Let's go ahead and we're going for a 194 in 6.45 seconds. So not only does it have a higher top speed than the C-Class engine, but it gets to that speed quicker as well and slightly higher maneuverability. Now, I'll admit that feels kind of sluggish. Oh, it's right, because it was at full throttle, right? These things turn better when they're at uh, half throttle. So when you're trying to put together uh, a ship and you're struggling to get your numbers low, well, a lot of it's going to be seeing if you can make things lighter, but your engines themselves are a component of that weight. So when you start thinking, can you make a ship as big as you want as maneuverable as you want well kinda i mean this is a pretty darn big ship as it is and i bet with a little bit more power i could make it even bigger well i mean we know that i could but ideally a smaller ship with more efficient use of engine power you can get more power to your guns so while doing my obligatory facelift which i think actually turned out fairly well i realized there was another metric that i kind of glossed over and that's whether or not weight affects acceleration. Now, obviously in real life it would, but there's a lot of things that happen in real life that aren't reflected in this game. So, you know, why not test it? You, well, you probably haven't noticed, but I have added a bunch of weight since, uh, since we did the last test, which resulted in a 6.45 second to 194. I've added a heavier shield because these engines allowed for it as well. This craft drives a little heavier because again, there was room for it. This thing is maxed out to hundred mobility as it was before, of course, obviously, but uh, there was about 150 extra weight still available before it went down to 99. So this, the short of it is, this is much heavier than my last ship, still hundred mobility. If weight affects acceleration, this ship should reflect that. And Let's go. Six point seven four seconds, which is close enough, given that uh, I'm tapping my phone to set the timer. We can call that within uh, statistical deviation, I believe, is the term. With the fairly substantial change in weight, I think we can safely say, no, no weight does not seem to affect acceleration, and if it does, it affects it so little that I wouldn't even bother paying attention to it. So next up, I'm gonna put up a uh, one year later review of Starfield. Now this is actually my first time through and first impressions are everything in this game. A bad first impression can ruin the experience of an otherwise good game. Whether or not this qualifies, well, we'll have to wait and see until the game's done. But that means I'm experiencing the game with a lot of the bugs fixed, with a lot of the, the balance changes already in and with mods and it may seem odd you know doing a review with mods but i'm not going to be reviewing the game as it came out of the box i'm going to be reviewing the game as an experience one year later for my first time around so if you're curious as to how it comes across if you you know manage to avoid the less than stellar opening i hope you stick around for that and i'll see you then